Hi booktube, Lynette here and in today's video I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in the month of September. Um, I didn't have as successful a month with finishing books as I usually do. I only managed to finish three books in total but I did actually read something from eight books completely. At the beginning of the month when I set out my TBR I said I was going to try and finish some of the books that I'd already started in previous months but hadn't um, got very far with and I did make some progress with those but I'll talk about that a bit later on. I'm going to start out by talking about the books that I did finish and the first of those books was my in-death read-along book for the month and that was Loyalty in Death and as before this is by J.D. Robb. In this book, Eve Dallas, the NYPSD detective, has uh, been targeted by um, an extremist group called Cassandra, who are threatening to um, carry out some terrorist acts, and which would mean the death of a lot of people. And they're basically challenging Eve to catch them. Um, again, as usual, Rourke is involved somehow, her husband, and then she drags in the team. Um, again, I really enjoyed I gave it four stars. I always enjoy these books uh, whenever I pick them up, and I always look forward to reading the next one. And the, there is lots of progression with Eve in her personal life through the books, which is great because when she started out, she had no friends. She had no interest in romance. Um, and it's just great to see her growing and blossoming as a woman and as a person. In this book, J.D. Robb shows that actually she's not afraid to kill off characters. Um, obviously, none of the central characters have been killed off, but she does bring in other characters that Eve is starting to form relationships and um, build a rapport with, and she's not afraid to kill them off. And I really appreciated that in this book. And I'm looking forward to reading more. Um, like I said, I read one of these every single month. There are 51 of them in the series. This was only book number eight, uh, no, book number nine. So I'm looking forward to working my through the way through these over the next couple of years. The next book that I finished was a romance novel and that's Flirting with 40 by Kay Bromberg. I've said before in previous videos that Kay Bromberg is a go-to author for me. This was a new release that came out round about the beginning of September. I gave it four stars. Um, it wasn't a knock me off my feet but it was a book that I saw myself in quite a lot, um, especially the beginning of the book. Uh, it's about Blakely Fox, who is a woman who is pushing 40. She's, she's, um, her next birthday, she will turn 40. She's recently been divorced, but her ex-husband is already, uh, engaged to a woman half her age. And she has a new younger boss at work who is trying to sabotage a promotion that she quite rightly deserves and has been working for, for her, pretty much her entire career. And then she meets Slade Henderson. Uh, he's younger than her, only by a few years. He's he's in his early 30s, so there's only about a seven, eight year age gap between them. But he pays attention to her and he makes her feel good about herself. And they decide that um, following a chance meeting where Slade meets her ex-husband and realises just how this has affected Blakely's self-esteem he decides to go on a work retreat that Blakely has to go on as part of a team building exercise and pretends to be her boyfriend uh, to obviously show off to everybody else that Blakely can get a younger man that uh, she is worth another man's attention even though her ex-husband uh, decided that younger and better was the way to go um, and it's just great. There's, there's a real friendship that um, builds between the two of them. Slade really pays attention to the fact that she has this low self-esteem and he does everything he can without trying to push it, that she is better than she sees herself to be. She is not fat. She is not ugly. She isn't, she isn't stupid. She's intelligent. She's, she's smart. She's funny. She's 
got a decent figure. She is worth being paid attention to. Um, and again, like I say, in the early stages of this book, I did kind of see myself in it quite a lot. I turned 40 last year. Um, and yeah, I was in a similar position at around the same time. And I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And it gave me a real boost as well, because I kind of looked at myself in the mirror and went, actually, no, <laughs> not like that. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed their story. Um, as usual with Kay Bromberg, there is a little bit of tension that tears the two of them apart and it takes a little while for them to come back together. Um, but in the end, there is a happy ever after and I'm glad that they got to have that. I do thoroughly recommend it. If you want to try romance, I do thoroughly recommend trying Kay Bromberg. She's really, really easy to read. Um, she she tackles some tough subjects in some of her books sometimes she has dealt with child abuse um, and some some quite severe child abuse uh, and off the top of my head I can't think of anything else but she does deal with some real tough subjects and I do recommend her because even though she deals with those tough subjects she does them in quite a sensitive way and she's a great starting point for me um, for romance for anybody new to the genre. And the final book that I actually finished in the month of September is a reread for me, and that is Revved by Samantha Towell. Um, I picked up this book because the author, I follow the author on Facebook. I'm part of her advanced reader team, and she plastered all over Facebook and Instagram, and other, pe other people that follow her plastered it all over there as well, that her book was... Uh, featured on a UK TV show called The Only Way is Essex. There was a book group and they actually read Revved. I read this when it first came out um, five years ago and I think I've reread it since. So I think this is either my third or fourth time reading it. And I enjoyed it just as much as the previous times that I've read it. Again, um, I kind of really identified with the main characters in some ways. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed it. Like I say, it's about Andy and Dressa. Uh, Andy for short, who is a mechanic coming into the world of Formula One and Carrick Ryan, who is the driver of the team that she goes to work for. Andy has been working towards working in Formula One her entire career uh, since she started, since she was a small child, because her father was a Formula One driver and she loved that world and she wanted to be part of it. And that was what she wanted to do. And... <clears throat> But she's always, always had a rule that she would never get involved with a driver. Unfortunately, her father passed away at the wheel in a horrific crash. And she, from that point on, she said that she would never put herself in the same position that her mum was in. So she did actually decide, make a rule, no, never going to get involved with a driver. Carrick tests that rule. He's the consummate player. He um, has a different woman in every city they go to. Um, only Andy challenges that view of his um, she pushes him and tells him that there will never be anything between them but they can be friends and he makes a real effort to actually be friends with her there's still the sexual tension there between them and that really does come off the page and it does really really work well and it's great because you actually get to see them building their relationship without anything else um, there are some misunderstandings along the way. They do give in to temptation and following that, Andy decides that, uh, yeah, because Carrick would normally only have one night stands with the women he sleeps with, that she would be that too. Only Carrick doesn't think that way. And then there's lots of tension between them um, from a different viewpoint because obviously they're both unhappy because they're not making more of the relationship um, than what they'd had previously. And it just moves on from there. Again, there is a happy ever after. It is a standalone, um, even though it's part of her Revved series. The second book in the series is actually about a different couple completely. So it's a stand series of standalones. And it was really great. I really enjoyed it. Like I say, I left the, the star rating on Goodreads as five stars. That was what I gave it when I read it first time. Uh, again, Samantha Towell, if you want an avenue into romance, I would give Samantha a try. She writes contemporary romance. 
um, in her early romance book, she did deal in some ways with things like addiction, um, but not in a heavy way, um, in a way that was palatable. And yes, I, I do thoroughly recommend her. And again, she, like I say, I'm on her early reader um, list. So I am fortunate enough to get her books before she releases them now uh, to, to be able to leave early feedback for her. And I just, I, I absolutely adore her books, really love them and highly recommend her. So like I said, at the start of the video, for September, I was trying to make progress in books that I had already started. Also for September, I did have some books that I was supposed to be reading um, because I like to say there's the in-depth read along, there's Romance Opoly, there's um, a book club that I now belong to. And I was supposed to read specific books for those. Uh, I Obviously, I did um, read the one for the in-depth read along but I didn't read a couple of the others. I did start the September book club pick and that was The Secrets of Strangers. And in this book, um, I only read 44 pages during the whole of September. I didn't start it until quite late in the month. And I I did enjoy what I started reading. And since, because um, I'm actually filming this a few days into October, since oh, the start of October, I have actually continued to read it. My the day that I'm filming this is supposed to be the book club meeting. Not I'm not going to finish the book in time, so I'm probably not going to take part in the meeting. Um, but I am going to push on and try and finish this. Uh, it's about um, a group of strangers who all go to a cafe in London um, to get breakfast or a cup of tea or what have you. It's uh, part of their morning routine. And while they're there, a gunman comes in and takes them all hostage. And it's an exploration of their lives and the secrets that they have and how this affects, are they going to get out of this situation as well? It also follows the gunman and his point of view and why he's doing this and how it's all connected and why he's picked this particular cafe. And it's... So far, it's really, really good. I'm actually really enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, there's some <clears throat> there's some subjects in there that maybe are trigger warnings. Um, there seems to be hints at abuse, um, possible rape. Uh, there's infertility, which I know could be a trigger for some people. And there's just lots of... Uh, issues there being explored i'm looking forward to finishing it and i am going to carry on reading it during the month of october and i'm going to try and get it finished so then i actually also started a book which i shouldn't have because i was only supposed to be reading books i'd already started and that weren't part of the must reads for the month and yeah i didn't stick to that did i uh I started to read Her Husband's Harlot by Grace Calloway. This is about the Lord and Lady Hartford, uh, Lady Helena um, and Lord Nicholas. Uh, they are a newlywed couple and unfortunately their wedding night didn't quite go as either of them planned. Um, they both felt it was a failure for different reasons. And following the wedding night, Lady Helena has found out that her husband, Nicholas, is visiting a house of ill repute. Um, I don't think he's actually visiting for the reasons she thinks he's visiting. But she decides that she is going to sneak in and try and find out what is happening and why. Um, and I believe it goes from there for some somehow or another. He doesn't recognise. They, they meet each other in... Um, in this house and he doesn't recognize her although she recognizes him which i do find a little strange um uh, but i think it leads to some um interesting interludes between the couple i think they discover each other sexually through this and i think that's going to be quite fun to read about I've only read 14 pages, so I have only got to the point where Lady Helena and Nicholas have actually discovered each other in the house. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. 
So the next book that I tried to read some of in this month was one that was um, on the list to try and that is Lorna Doon by R.D. Blackmore. As I've said in previous months, this is a romance set in the place where I live or around the area where I live. And I managed to read 27 pages. Um, it's quite slow going. Normally I read one and a half to two pages a minute. Um, with this book, I'm reading about one page every two minutes. I think maybe I've picked the wrong version of the book. It's got extremely, it's got quite old language in it. Um, it's not been, it's not a version that's been rewritten to make it more up to date and more palatable to uh, more modern readers. So I am trying with it. I'm going to keep going. Um, I'm still at the point where John Ridd, the main male character, is a young boy. He's been brought home from school because his father has died and his mother has just confronted his father's killers. But yes, I'm I'm still I'm gonna push through with it um, because I do want to read it. It is one that was it, like I said in previous videos. It was given to me when I was about ten years old, and I was told to read it, and I never got round to it. And I just want to take this opportunity to to finish it. So I'm gonna push through with it and see how I get on in October. The next book that I managed to read some of during the month of September is The Knights of Neustria from the Secret Breaker series by H.L. Dennis. I managed to read 75 pages in total, so I've got a little bit further through it. Still really enjoying it. It's a middle grade series, so it's kind of 9 to 12 year old age range um, about a group of people who are trying to solve the mystery of an unreadable document. Um, in this book they are again chasing down um, a mystery that is supposed to be able to help them solve the document and it, it's a little bit of adventure, it's um, some light reading after some of the heavier stuff I've been reading in recent months. Um, so yes, I'm like I say, I've, I've, I've managed 75 pages um, so I'm about two thirds of the way through it. I've only got I've only got about 130 pages left to read. So if I actually sat down and got on with this, I probably could finish this in an evening. Um, so I really do want to make some progress because I have got the next three books in the series to read as well. And I'm supposed to be returning this to my nephew uh, because he's rereading them as I've been reading them. Um, so see what happens hopefully I'll get this one done fairly soon and then the final book um, that I managed to make some progress in is a real chunk of a book and it's one that I've been reading since May I think June I think I started end of May beginning of June I think I started it and that is The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan this is the fourth book in his Wheel of Time series it is a thousand page book it's very detailed it's high epic fantasy um there is lots of information in there to take in there's lots of information to remember from the previous three books it follows a good 10 different people um who all have their own issues and things to remember and it's just lots and lots of information and it is it's like oh, it's like diving into a pool of jelly and trying to swim sometimes um but I do enjoy the story. I do enjoy them. Um, I read these books. I've said before, I've read these books before. Um, and I did enjoy them first time round. This is a reread. I really want to get to the series, which is up here. Um, I really want to read the whole series. I never finished the series first time round. But yes, so I managed to get another 150 pages into this book. Again, I'm about now about that's all I've got left to read. So I'm about two thirds of the way through it, um, nearly three quarters of the way through it. And I really want to finish it. Um, although I think after this one, I'm probably going to take a break and I probably won't pick the series up until after Christmas then. Um, I think there's just, I think I've just overloaded myself with fantasy novels in recent months. And I think I just need to take a break. Um, certainly with the, the books that I've actually finished, they're romance novels. Um, I definitely need something a bit lighter um, so I'm probably gonna 
if I can if I can read get this finished I'm probably gonna put fantasy down for a while or switch fantasy series to something that maybe isn't quite so sludgy to dry, wade through um so that was everything I read or attempted to read in the month of September how was your reading month how many books did you get through um did you read any good books please let me down low in the comments down below and if you've liked this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and i will talk to you all again soon bye mm -hmm.